Gabe's going to be like, okay. Jordan fine. just confirmed that uh, SpaceX will be purchasing Steam. Oh, <laughs> man. And, and just running it into the ground, just like Twitter. We're getting Half-Life yeah. 3 out of it. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I thought we were going to get some slack from last week. I did. We spent an hour fighting Jitsi, and uh, t- turns out, like, the day after that, you, you get the tale, and, like, you could have never won. Silly, silly humans. You were doomed from the start. This week, Spectrum is like, we're just going to kill your upload speed, so we're doing a radio version, um, if you're listening right now and live Shrek. in our Discord. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome to 105.5, The Weasel. Damn Welcome you, Superman! Better than nothing edition. This is the best we can ever... Not, not, the, not the mankiest stream we've ever concocted. We've done worse, so... Here we are. What's up? What's new? I'm Vin. That's Jordan. And that's Pedro. And uh, just to keep things interesting, we are running all this on the Raspberry Pi. Because I was, like, looking forward to testing it. That was the problem. That, that's what fate smelt. I was like... <laughs> Let me grind my heel in your neck on that one. Like, all right, awesome, lovely. Just, just a nice swift kick in the taint, dude. Love it. Mm-hmm. Tell me about uh, Mister Thousand Dollar Hard Drive Man. How you doing? Uh, oh, I'm I'm a thousand dollars later because I had to buy a bunch of hard drives. I have RAID enclosure sitting next to me, chugging along. I'm, I'm just like every time it makes a noise, I'm like, come on, just like don't no no drive failures, no drive failures, please. Um. Yeah, no, and I, I decided this was the way to do things instead of, oh, I can just fail drives in the actual computer and plug them in and then, like, expand the file, like, rebuild the RAID and then expand the file system, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. this seems like a lot of work. I'm going to set up two RAIDs and copy all the shit over and hope for the best. <laughs> so, uh, so, I'm, I, so, uh, oh, I, I have, I have the status up on the TV there. Uh, I'm after about a day and a half, I'm about 10% done of this raid 10 sync. What? I got 19,000 minutes left. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for files to finish copying. I'm waiting for this, for this, uh, striping mirroring operation to be done. And okay. I am praying to whatever gods will fucking hear me. Do you have that problem though? Do you have that problem? Like where you get like 60% and you're hundred percent sold on the, you've worked out a better, more efficient solution that will finish quicker than your current one. I don't even think it was like a better or more efficient no, solution. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the, the possibility of you coming up with one before that finishes where your brain goes, you know what, we can scrub this and if we do it this way, it'll be yeah, even no, quicker. Uh- I, I think that doing the actual raid rebuilt probably would have been faster now that I'm sitting now that I had it like sitting up and do this because it's like oh if I'm gonna have to wait for the raid to synchronize anyways like I might as well just like add the new discs in and then sort of pick up where I left off but I, I've committed to this far enough mm. and uh, we're, we're we're past the point of no return so I say in my stupid obstinance. I'll, I'll report back next week when all my data is lost and corrupted and I can never recover it. Oh, man. That's got to be extra rough, like new hard drive, too. You're like, well, we're going to find out of one of them now. Pretty much. I, I, I spent like I spent like a good day going through the, the, the Backblaze like drive reports. And I'm like, OK, but which of these drives can I actually like buy right now? <laughs> And like <laughs> at, at, a, at a reasonable price, because they're not like fucking enterprise drive. Man, platter drives. It was it was a thousand bucks Canadian for four eight terabyte drives. That's was, yeah, and that's then, about and, right. Yeah, and it's like oh, and I bought a one terabyte SSD, something that's way faster, uh, way better drive. Yeah, it's fifty bucks. Fucking love it. Fucking love it. <sighs> Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird that you just get NVMe? Yeah, drives like just as a side side purchase. You're like, oh yeah, let me pick this. I yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just throw. You know, I'm, I'm, already, I'm already spending this much money. Yeah. What's another fifty bucks? Yeah. Throw, throw, <sighs> throw, throw on the fast drive. Right. When you, when your inner smog has been wounded to the point of like, yeah. All right. Let's just spend a couple. Yeah. Mm, comparatively, how much you better, Mateus? I, I have been. Uh, now that most of the gremlins uh, have been found on the car, I've just been going around trying to find. All of the like inside plastics that squeak or rattle even a little bit, and I've been fixing them. I had to actually buy an entire roll of felt tape just to get the um, 
parcel shelf boot lid, the thing that covers the uh, the trunk, so that people can see what kind of junk you're carrying around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, basically it sits on like plastic rails, and it itself is made of plastic, so it has a couple of felt pads from the factory on it, but the car is 12 years old, so they were worn rather thin, and it was starting to rattle. So I got that. It's done. Uh, the side panels on the doors, I basically just went in, popped the um, the plastic rivets and uh, the screws and tightened them back up and put them in properly. And no more squeaks. It's great. It's very, very, very comfortable inside now. now I, have a, I, have a, I have a question. <laughs> yes. Would, Pedro, would you drive an AMC Gremlin? Uh, not for the fuel consumption. <laughs> But I I wouldn't mind driving it. I'm not opposed to small cars at all. I mean, I did buy a Mazda too. So, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so if you've been following, I've been playing around with a bunch of Jitsi stuff. I'm working on a guide at setting it up because it kind of works on a Raspberry Pi four right now. If you're watching the video version, you're like, yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? And it's like, yeah, it looks fucking fantastic. It's not even at like 25 percent load with two people. I was hoping to do some load testing on it this afternoon. But uh, since this episode is brought to you by Spectrum Business, um. <laughs> We're not going to be doing that. Uh, yeah, outside, outside of that, not much. Just uh, playing around. So, do you think we'll ever get some uh, backup bandwidth for the horse? I mean, I mean, the horse definitely needs some more trunk juice. It is looking a little <laughs> sad back there. It's the steam! <laughs> Have you checked yeah. its gyroscope? Giro. What was that yeah, little fucker's was... name in uh, the BBZ that shall not be named? Uh, the one with a gyro? Gyro? I don't... Uh... G- Jiren? No, the little fucking robot. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Jero? Oh, yeah, the oh, one... yeah from, from, oh, from GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little robot dude who's... Yeah, I, I do not fucking remember the name of it. I, 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 I know who you're talking about. <laughs> well, the... The one who's like, Goku, Goku, bam, like, bam. Gero, 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 Gero. Yeah, you said yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that, right? Some, something to the effect of that, yeah. <laughs> to like yeah. the third episode I was watching, it's like, this is just doing the same thing over and over I'm out. So, all right. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you have uh, installed accelerometers on your horse and you're using it to play your video games, you might want to pay attention to the current Steam client beta because they've introduced the new Gyro 2 mouse and you might be going, wait a second, isn't that already there? No, they had Gyro S mouse, uh, which was um, basically the Gyro implementation that it defaulted to. Uh, now it's Gyro 2 mouse, and they have both running at the same time because Gyro 2 mouse is the one that they're actively iterating on, and they are doing quite a lot of uh, really interesting stuff. I posted the link on the um, Input Labs, the uh, people who made the alpaca, I posted the link on their uh, Discord server, and a bunch of people were like, oh, hell yeah, Valve is actually doing something with the gyro after they themselves were the ones who introduced it with the Steam controller. So, uh, it's good, very good to see. Very good indeed. They are, they are saying, though, that this is going to be a bit of an unstable feature, ironically, because they're still soliciting feedback and, like, getting some real-world testing, so as... Uh, as uh, people are using it, they're going to be tweaking the UI feature for it. I mean, it's good, though. I remember um, people didn't know about the gyro on the Steam controller. There was, like, a post a couple years ago where, like, someone what was like, to say guys, people did you... found out. Like, yeah, people were like, hey, did you know that there's... <laughs> there was, like, a blog post a few years ago. I was like, hey, did you know this fucker had, like, a gyroscope installed on it? We didn't. Oh, man, but you could... Then, then we were like, okay, can we just... Have... You said you liked it for uh, first-person shooters, right? For, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for, um... Because uh, I, I got my first exposure to that on the Nintendo Switch, Gyro Aim plus uh, plus uh, the joysticks is actually like not terrible. Because uh, you can do like you can do like the minor corrections with the gyro, and you can do like the big sweeps with the with the D pad. No, do you got to think? Um, um, Steam Deck's got a gyro built into it. Oh, uh, it does. Yeah, there's a whole ass Steam controller packed in there. Oh mm-hmm. man, um, do we, uh, I. I kind of joking around but I, I wouldn't be against this mod if somebody put some uh, ibm thinkpad nipples in fucking steam deck wasn't there like a mod that changes the track pads to like the nipple texture i boy i dude I, I want those little <laughs> red nipples there's bound to be a sticker that you can put on them as well yes yeah, the, 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 the think deck <laughs> i'd probably buy that oh give it like that fold-out keyboard too when we just open that bitch up 
it be doing? Speaking of speam, uh, speam decks. Yes, the speam deck. Speams. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, Ver- the Verge was having a conversation with uh, some folks from Valve. And Valve has been pretty, pretty consistent on their whole, yeah, P- uh, or Pierre Loop Griffet, at least, Pierre Loop Guru is all like, <laughs> yeah, listen, we're really keen on, like, keeping the hardware target of the Steam Deck consistent so that, you know, people have a thing to, to target. So, while there is going to be a Steam Deck 2 eventually, it's, if there's going to be a revision, it's not going to, like, update the GPU or the SOC or anything. Uh, and, like, the, the Verge just put out this puff piece uh, saying their hopes and dreams for what Steam Deck 2 could look like with, like, a bigger screen and better battery. And, of course, we all want that. I do kind of hope, though, with that EU ruling that we get a uh, we get a Steam Deck with a swappable battery, though. That would be pretty nice. Yeah, and uh, they have been very consistent because uh, Lawrence Yang and Pierre Lou have, since the beginning, everyone's like, okay, when's the Steam Deck 2 coming along? Uh, we're very much trying to make this work, and we believe that the hardware is strong enough that it should last five, six years. And yeah, now with the uh, Tokyo Game Show, um, correct? That was, yeah, uh, they the, the they actually had the interview with um, Pierre Lewin saying, yeah, no, we believe that the hardware is strong enough, and it should absolutely last for a few more years. And once they think about doing the revision, I, I very much look forward to it because the Steam Deck, as it currently is, is surprising in what it can achieve. Good job. <laughs> I think he brings up a really good point in the interview. He's like, we don't want to piss off developers. Mm-hmm. He's like, we got this hardware. It's a target. Aim for it. Like, a very good target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, pe- people are worried about like, oh, the Steam Deck's hardware isn't that great. Look at the fucking Nintendo Switch. That shit is like a fucking 10-year-old tablet by Whatever. now. Whatever. I've been people- told by many uh, posters on Reddit that the Switch 2 is going to curb stomp a 4090. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will. When Nintendo releases it in 2027, 2027, the <laughs> like 200 years from now. Um, but yeah, no, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the the, uh, the the new Switch is supposedly going to have a. Um, it's it's not Ada. It's Ampere. Uh, they're using the Ampere Tegra chip, uh, it, which is. Faster than 49, I guarantee. <laughs> it's I mean, it is faster than in. the old uh, Maxwell one that they were using, the M1, sure. But get, you have the new architecture. Why are you not using the new one? <laughs> it's just going to oh, it's going to be the Switch again. <laughs> uh, you know, you talk about like two stubborn ass companies. I, I didn't love to sit in on a fucking negotiating uh, negotiation meeting between Nintendo and NVIDIA. <laughs> well, we, 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 we don't have quite that, but we do have some negotiations between Ninten- or Microsoft and Nintendo, though. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, Nintendo's going to be a completely different company when Microsoft purchases. <laughs> yeah, in, 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 in 202037. This comes from Forbes. Microsoft board supported buying Nintendo or Valve in 2020 internally because there was this big Microsoft leak, uh, the court case stuff going on. Which and- they apparently leaked themselves accidentally. <laughs> Yeah, yep, they did. They submitted it improperly. <laughs> there was a bit of an oopsie doodle, so there was a bunch of stuff to like roll through. And like, you know, I've seen some news outlets running those like, uh, what was it? Uh, Microsoft was going to buy Valve or my, and like, no, Phil Spencer was like, yeah, it'd be pretty fucking cool. Like at some point in my career, like we could, I'd be the one responsible for like purchasing Nintendo is what he fucking said. Yeah, it, it, it would mm-hmm. be the career maker was the was the quote. Yeah, so, and, like, the whole idea of, like, buying Nintendo, like, like, like I put down, man, Nintendo's an old, uh, 112, 113-year-old company. They've been around for a minute. Like, they're, they've already, like, knocked that, like, we have to have constant growth shit out of their fucking mouths. And I think more companies would do well. Though the one good thing I will say about Nintendo is to adopt that philosophy, man, because they're worried about, like, making shit that's fun. It's going to make them the most amount of money. They don't, like, fuck shareholders. Fuck a board. And when it comes down to like Microsoft, Microsoft, I, I wouldn't look this up. They tried to buy Nintendo way back when. Uh, what year was that? Um, I have to look that up. I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, uh, two, it was Steve Ballmer, so it was in the 90s? Quite possibly. Uh, 2000, 2001. 2001, okay. right around <laughs> there. And uh, they Nintendo just laughed them out of the fucking room. 
There's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but reading through some of the leaks, man, some of the rah rah about the Xbox release, the latest Xbox, uh, they're just disconnected from fucking reality, man. They're just like, <laughs> we got the best system, the best hardware. We're going to be knocking fucking gamers off our Xbox dick left and right. We're not going to be able to. And Game Pass is perfect. Now, Game Pass arguably is pretty good service. Um, but what I want to focus on more is I personally don't believe Valve will ever get purchased as long as Gabe is still running it. But I do want to pose I mean, a question to you too. Is what happens after Gabe leaves and passes it on to whoever? Oh, absolutely. The fucking the finance MBA piranhas are going to try and hack it up and sell it to the highest bidder to to maximize their fucking stock portfolios. 100%. Um, Although th that's when the supposed flat structure, which isn't as flat <laughs> as we've uh, discovered. But it, that, it, it's that more, kind it's of flat like structure. A it's less yeah, of a pyramid. It, it, will, it will actually impact that somewhat because there is no way that they'll manage to wrangle at least everyone. And if they, the higher ups that end up in charge do try and pull that move, there's going to be a big. Shake there's gonna up. be a there's gonna be a brain drain, anyways, right? It's not like when these companies, especially Microsoft, buys out another publisher or another developer. It's not like they keep those employees around. They fucking do these mass layoffs. Well, and like, like, can you imagine coming in, like, say you just like say it was Microsoft or whoever bought them, and they walked into them, was like, "Why aren't you guys begging some games? Chop chop, let's get to it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean that, that that's what will do it, right? Like, some, there's gonna be some like rich gamer who like really really wants Half Life Three, and he's he's gonna like m like take the cruise ship of money up to Gabe and be like, hey, let's just get this done. And Gabe's gonna be like, okay. Jordan fine. just confirmed that uh, SpaceX will be purchasing Steam. Oh man, <laughs> and and just running it into the ground, just like Twitter. Oh, we're Half Life yeah. Three out of it. It's yeah. going to be called X Games or something. Half Life X. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, and the X Games are gonna sue it. No, but like, I, like, uh, Ven brought this up. Like, um, basically, uh, stre a streaming service, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the news segment when uh, we get to the relevant bit. But a uh, a stream um, Game Pass uh, is basically uh, is basically Microsoft's answer to something like Netflix, and a Microsoft hosted streaming service backed by Game Pass is literally just gaming Netflix. And so something like Microsoft would want to scoop up every single publisher possible well, under under their roof so they can they can create that value add. But we're, we're seeing right now that Netflix model is kind of falling apart. Um, but I was looking at the um, forecast and like these, these leaks are all sort of dated from like 2020. So, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Mix, the, the, mix this is all models. new. The <laughs> yeah. cloud focused Xbox, I think, was scheduled for 2028 release. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they, they have the controller up and coming. And supposedly they did have a handheld, but it wasn't like they were like, yeah, maybe we can make a handheld. Micro mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the Jaguar they were, too. Uh, no, Windex. <laughs> they were also testing the um, Windows uh, game UI thing for Windows 11. So uh, I don't know. I mean, they they would have to. Oh, jeez. You know yeah. what? Just for for my for my <laughs> so amusement, just, Redmond. Make a dedicated handle. I need to see this. I want to see what it is. I, I, I listen. I, I, I just say they just got to break up Microsoft, right? If they're going to be trying to congeal with each other, anyways, we might as well make them spend like a shit ton of money to do it. Yeah, uh, it's Microsoft, man. They're like, you tried that one time. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta make them spend even more money. Throw, throw like two pies at Satcha. Yeah, it's just another antitrust. I mean, Microsoft gets an antitrust suit thrown at them every other year, so it's probably a yeah. curse at this point. <laughs> so yes, uh, no one has to in the immediate future, or much less in the distant future. Uh, you have to worry about Microsoft buying up uh, Phil Spencer's hopes and you know his fantasy, his fanfic, <laughs> where he's like, "I'm buy buy me a Nintendo and uh, give me a Valve." But Phil, you can always buy Linux Gamecast. We'll take your money. Tree fitty. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. Couple of new games. Actually, we got one yeah. new game because a uh, developer reached out to us. Yeah, Bacon Patrol. Uh, bacon? This is a yeah, Bacon God, Patrol. Hungry much? <laughs> I'm always hungry. That's that's my secret, Tony. I'm always hungry. Um, yeah, uh, Bacon Patrol. It is a cooperative and relaxing laying tile laying exploration game. So basically, like a board game. Um, they have a free demo available. It looks pretty chill because you can like plant uh, tiles, create islands. It kind of gives me like a bit of a Carcassonne vibe if you've ever played that board game. 
But unlike Carcassonne, there is no online multiplayer. It's local multiplayer yeah. only, which is, you know, thank you for reaching out to us. We really, we really appreciate you mm-hmm. th- taking the time to, to reach out and we'd love to talk about your game. But if you're making a digital board game, having online multiplayer is kind of a must, which is sad because this looks pretty chill. It's got a Linux demo. I, yeah, mm-hmm. you just can't you just can't play it with people unless they're in the same room as you, or you can always use remote play. <sighs> All right, yeah. I mean, that... it, this one is turn based, so it would probably, as remote play together goes, this would probably be okay. <laughs> yeah. But like, it would just be okay, just, just okay, yes. So uh, uh, they, they do make a note in the system requirements. Uh, if you have issues running the game, please get, contact them. They have some knowledge about Linux, but not a lot of test devices. They could only go to the Linux store a couple of times and buy like one or two Linux. They probably just bought the Steam Deck, which, fair enough, that's what you should be targeting anyway. (laughs) And, uh, well, uh, apparently uh, they they did try to test this on Sent7, but the system requirements are pretty modest. You just need a one gigahertz processor and uh, anything that supports OpenGL 3.2, and you're good to go. So basically, at the end of the day, if you find yourself like suffering from Teslaphobia, probably not the game for you. No. <laughs> may, Although, may, 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 may I suggest phasmophobia? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man! Uh, game updates. Yes. Hey, we specifically, got a, a game that we, I think, we all like. We all wish there was more to it. Yeah, Not necessarily. Last time we tried to play it. Yes. Uh, they actually put a bit more work into it as well. Uh, but no, they seem to be uh, under the impression that the issue is that the game was too cheap. Criminal. Yes. <laughs> Way too cheap. So they're uh, increasing the price by five bucks, but they're doing a sale before the price increases. So if you haven't played... Um, Hypercharge Unboxed. Hypercharge <laughs> Unboxed. I, I had to actually <laughs> double check that that was still the name. Yes. Hypercharge Unboxed. Uh, it's... Hypercharged yeah, uh, bacon box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wig you steak box. It, it is effectively you are an action figure and you're going around shooting other action figures yeah, and little soldiers. army men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. Did you, 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 you remember that movie Small Soldiers? Well, no. I mean, everybody, and I think we all did because that what was that level in Unreal, the bathroom fucking level, you know, from, mm. yeah, way back when, like, we, we mm-hmm. like that, like, oversized, you know, little tiny people. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it brings you back to a time when you would just, like bring your action figures or whatever into the into the bathtub and be like, yeah. So you, when you your imagination play- could still run wild and you didn't actually know how things worked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I still have that. I just play a shit ton of D anD D though. <laughs> rest, rest, rest of you guys have dead imaginations. <laughs> so yeah, like the first thing I was thinking, I, I had to go back and like listen to it when this was first announced, and they sent us some keys. They like tried to send us some bonus keys too. I was checking my mm-hmm. Twitter DMs and like here's some more keys. I'm like, we're good, man. Uh, one of the first things I said, like even at 1999, I was like, hey, "That's overpriced, man. It's overpriced. It, it, it's. I mean, it looks great. It does. Nobody's knocking the quality of it, but the competition out there is free. Yeah, yeah. your your competition is like open arena and like yeah. I, again, I don't like their their justification for increasing the price makes sense, right? Like the game's been out for a while. They've been working hard on it. They feel that they've put enough effort into it that it justifies the price increase. That's all well and good. That's completely understandable logic but it's not going to sell more copies no at all uh, no, no, not not at all the most what it will give you is a steeper discount when there's a sale or a bundle and people will go oh that's real cheap i'm gonna buy this now <laughs> um what it's gonna do because I, I went and looked and 80 players hasn't even peaked at that it was like 78 players over the last five months so this is get it's like core community and we see this happen with multiple you know online be it shooters, fighters, or something, you get that core community that stays in there. This is just going to in- insulate them more because you, you can pull up, if you're thinking about buying a game like this, where are you going to go? You're going to go to Steam Charts. You can take a look and you're like, Ugh, 24 bucks to go get my ass handed to me 24 um, <laughs> 7. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May, 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 maybe like toss on a free weekend too. That one might have done right. Like get, get, get people actually playing the game and be like, oh, this is fun. I would actually like to continue playing this game as opposed mm-hmm. to... And while I do understand that we all need food, the developers included, yeah, <laughs> we all need food, so people are less likely to 
be willing to pay as much for a game that they're not entirely sure of. And as far as they know, the multiplayer is just the core audience or effectively dead. Well, I got a thing, Pedro, is like one thing that we're not as adverse to is because we say it all the time when nobody makes a peep about it is once a game comes out of early access, we're like, okay, yeah, we're going to raise the price. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get that. But when the game's been out like three or four years, like, okay, we're, we're raising the price. Uh, it it should be the other way around. The game's, <laughs> the game's older. been out a while. You kind of want to drive as much new people into it as possible, so you Make it lower volume. the price. M- m- maybe maybe their business analyst is like a former NVIDIA person, and they're like, yeah, we just gotta make the older cards more expensive. Yeah. That'll that that'll make people buy them. <laughs> I, I I wish wish them the best of luck. It's a good you know good looking game. It was fun to play, mm-hmm. but just never oh, had yeah. a community around it. And I don't, you know, we're, we're saying this out of concern. Like, I do, I seriously do not think this is going to. Yeah, the, the, this, this is not the play. I, I, I understand the thinking, no. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, yeah. But as, as Pedro said, uh, increase, increasing the price when everything else is getting expensive means that, like, this luxury purchase becomes even more so that. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Me existing, that'll be 70 bucks. Like, okay. I, I mean, that's, it's still a better love story than what Unity was trying to pull, right? Last week, we talked about Unity doing a dumb, like an epic <laughs> dumb, something that will be told in tales to children's children's children. I'm like, you ain't gonna believe this shit. They decided that they wanted some money from their developers, you know? From people, everyone. <laughs> retroactive money. Like, if you, every time somebody installed one of your games, you need know, you know, give them a little taste of it. And yeah, even the games that you published a while back, but wasn't in the T. Oh, it doesn't matter. TOS. What? Nobody reads that. Poof! Look, it's gone. Ha ha! Can't even see it anymore. <laughs> and uh, unsurprisingly, you know, we talked about it last week. Thanks again, Scott, for coming in, talking about this. Of like, okay, is this clearly like this? This is like snidely whiplash levels of like comic. Give give evil me the rent. I must have right? the rents. Yeah, <laughs> like this is unbelievable. And you know, I said I wasn't first person to say it won't be the last. It's like, ah, so this is that maneuver. Like, hit everybody with that and let's roll it back. Mm -hmm. Well, Unity has listened, everyone, and we have an open letter. We're sorry. So sorry. sorry. To our community. I'm Mark Whitten. I lead Unity Create, which includes, so you're not in charge. Fuck, I don't care. But he is sorry. Um, So what do we got at the end of the day? Developers will pay the lesser of 2.5% revenue for install fees if revenue is above 1 mil. And it's going to be self-reported. Because everybody called their bluff, like get the fuck out of here. You're not gonna be like, go fuck yourself, Unity. That shit ain't happening. Yeah, yeah. Your 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 data model that determines how many times things yeah, been done. Your yeah. trust me, bro. System that you got together. Uh, there will be no install fees on sales below one mil at all. Period. Unity free, and this is the upcoming version of Unity. To be clear about this, well, um, now you're going to be able to get rid of the splash screen on the free edition. Some people were really excited about that. However, um. Fees are only going to apply to 2024 LTS and later, so nothing's going to be retroactive. Again, as, uh, lo- as, lo- as long as you don't update, that's the big one. Is they're saying you can that- update. When you update, you get all the nasty stuff like the yeah. install stuff, and uh, users are going to be on the same TOS as the version that you're shipping a game with. Yeah, that that was that was the big one that people who already had a game released with previous terms of service that they clicked agree without actually reading. We're also all of a which, sudden being retroactively being charged for which is installs. Not, th- this is this isn't as good a thing as people think because it's like okay, well now you just can't ever upgrade your Unity, Unity yeah, version, so no more security updates, that version unless... no no more performance fixes, no more bug yeah. fixes. <laughs> no, uh, not not according to our Unity. I saw people <laughs> celebrating in the streets, Jordan. They were <laughs> dancing, they were happy. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. all their prayers have been answered just because Unity backtracked all the shit that they would have been sued out of fucking oblivion for if they dared try to implement. But we did it, Internet. We fucking <laughs> we did it. Did it. We, we yeah, solved the man. murder. <laughs> you don't have to be too cynical to see that this was what they wanted to do from the beginning. But if they'd just done that. You know, I think they wanted to do that to begin with, too. Like, yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm like, sure they, 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 they figured, they you know the, what, let's try, try that, see how that yeah, goes. They, yeah, they, and they even if, try. It, if, if they yeah, swallowed it, it if, if the people swallowed <laughs> it, then absolutely, they would have just gone on with the with the previous plan. There they, were, they were hoping that it wouldn't be as much backlash, and people would just take it. But they had a fallback and, uh, position. If there is a backlash, then we'll just give them the, the, the thing that we actually wanted to do, which was 
this as it's currently being presented by Mark. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I guess following the law and having people stay on those terms of service that they agree is probably something that they could wish to weasel themselves out of. I which truly was certainly believe, a part Pedro, of it. that they didn't think people were going to jump ship. Yeah. And I think big enough people with big enough names and big enough projects said, fuck this shit, I'm yeah. out. And they went, and that wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo. Spe- speaking of Nintendo, there because let, let let's let's talk about all the Nintendo games that are built on Unity, mm-hmm. like Pokemon yeah. Go, Pokemon Brilliant <laughs> Diamond, Shining Pearl, a bunch of Mario shit. Can you imagine a bunch Nintendo, of Nintendo. Nintendo's like, bitch, we buy you. Yeah, but, no, they're, 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 some, someone on the the Lutris Discord had a great meme of it's it's like the, the uh, Smith Mr. Smithers with the gun standing behind Tony Robbins, it's just like <laughs> Nintendo's lawyers. We've recanted all, and Unity's like we've recanted all our statements, you guys. Because yeah, yeah, Nintendo's like the fuck you're retroactively charging us. <laughs> And uh, Don't Nintendo worry, themselves Nintendo, saying we'll get that Microsoft it, to pay for it for you. <laughs> that it would be the um, it would be the platform holders uh, that would be paying for the streaming games. That they would be the ones who paid the installation fees. I'm pretty sure Microsoft wasn't on board with that either. But yeah, uh, and the thing is, everyone in the actual leadership positions, the executive level, they're all still there. Mm-hmm. Yep. They they all did insider trading. If you look at the amount of shares that John Richitello and the other scumbags, um, now to Richitello, just so we have a fucking point on it, he was continuing. He all right because this is stick with me. He routinely sold. Oh yeah, no, it, he shares. sold over fifty thousand shares over the past twelve months. Right, this it wasn't like a zero. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's he. Well, I mean, he's he's vesting. It's fucking stock it, shares. It, it, this is it's not it's an unusual insider thing. trading as uh, uh, blatant as it goes, but hey, he did it over 12 months, so you can't say that it was insider trading. Because it legally wasn't, but no. Okay. <laughs> yes, legally, I, I, it wasn't. <laughs> now, I mean, like, here's <laughs> to my fucking point, if I can get to it, gentlemen. It's also to Pedro's point. It's a bad sign when somebody's dumping that much stock. And they're all still there, so they're going to try again. Oh, th- this is regroup. This is like, all right, so we got a battle. Okay, we, we understand what the fucking lines are. How do we get back over them, though? Yeah, they're, they're, they're just going to try again. It's going to be in piecemeal. Again, like I was saying in the pre- so super shows, we got to stop listening to NBAs. They don't actually know shit. Yeah. <laughs> they have a piece of paper that says they do, but that piece of paper was granted we to them to by other liars. Profits. Not... But, <laughs> yeah. No, okay, well, one not, of the things that was very fucking insulting was all of the... Uh, we understand that you're confused. I'm like, where did you come from? You understand that you make a fucking game engine, and right? Angst. <laughs> you're, yes. you're confusing game developers. Is that what you fucking? Yeah, people wholly unfamiliar with spreadsheets and maths, right? Yeah, whoa, well, way over their fucking head, right? <laughs> and, and, and and complex rule systems. Yeah, no, they don't mm-hmm. understand that at all, dude. Um, like, how does that like this is complete fucking disconnect from the people that give you money? Um, now, one of the things that's really sad about it, what I was saying in our unity, we just addressed it. People were not just throwing shit in the fucking streets and rioting, saying, no, we're still getting off fucking unity. Like, okay, it's all good now. It's good. I feel comfortable continuing on with this. Now, listen, I get it. Like, if you're like six months out from shipping, fucking ship that bitch on unity. Ain't nobody saying, hey, scorched earth that. You got, this is, this is your exit right here, though. Yeah, you, the, you build that next fucking game on Unity, and when this shit comes back, because it's coming back, mm-hmm. it is. If Unity's still around long enough for it to come back, and nobody's gonna have any sympathy for you right now. All right, so I, that's I, path I, of least, least resistance shit. Yeah, it's gonna be work. It's gonna be a motherfucker. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. But do you want to stay in this? And you want to be doing this, or do you want to be paying fucking Unity five years from now for every game you sell? Because oh. I, I, I think Unity's gonna be fine though, because the 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 vast majority of people are gonna stick around. Are those low effort mobile app developers who are gonna try and just skirt under that hundred thousand dollar limit and try to like make as many crappy games as possible? It's probably mm. not gonna be great for Unity long term. This is the the death knell of them kind of being able. Again, this is this is like the Red Hat thing where once upon a time Red Hat was able to set course, but now they burned a lot of that goodwill. Yeah. Same thing no, with we're Unity. We're still in well, charge, you guys. Follow yeah, us. Once, woo, woo. once, once, once upon a time, Unity would have been able to set course. They can't uh, do that anymore. This was their fucking play. Now, another thing that was brought to our attention is uh, another post on Unity. 
Okay, this is how dysfunctional fucking Unity is as a company right now, because this worked its way through the chain to be posted on their social media account on Zitter. Because we talked about the TOS last week getting deleted off their GitHub, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like, poof, oh, well, that never happened. It, it just said that we would never change the terms of service. You do. So Unity has a reason. It wasn't just willy-nilly <laughs> they got rid of it. It wasn't out of anger. It wasn't out of spite. It wasn't to fuck with you. No, 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 no. Very well justified. So I want to get this uh, exactly right. I totally hear your frustration. Now, this comes from at Unity. Just to echo what Mark said, we are so sorry <laughs> for <our> earlier. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. For, very sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> however, however, brace yourselves for this. I, it's like get a good breath in. They are genuinely disappointed at how our removal of the terms of service has been framed. You monsters, you framed us across the internet. We removed it way before the pricing change was announced because, in all bold, because the views were so low, comma, not because we didn't want people to see it. Bullshit! No, uh, yeah, sweet yeah, fucking no. bullshit! Do you want to fucking build a game <laughs> with motherfuckers that in leadership positions that allow shit like this to go out because it has to be properly fucked? On multiple <laughs> levels for this to get out on the internet, and it's still this, there this today. Is, this is the equivalent of Arthur Dent having to go down to a basement in a pub to <laughs> see the directions to the form he needs to sign to not have his house destroyed by a bulldozer, right? Like this is some fucking Byzantine shit. Uh, but you know the. But you know what? We we do have some we do have some good motion moving in this direction. Good news. Because the fine folks at uh, at uh, what was it? Relogic. They are mm-hmm. uh, they they've decided uh, you know they're gonna literally put their money where their mouth is, and they are offering one hundred thousand uh, dollars to both FNA and Godot, keeping Flimajibibibo full of ramen noodles for the next <laughs> couple of years. Um, Keep that Wagoon man looking sexy now, as he can possibly be. Yes, please. The boy needs to eat. Yeah, they're, the, so yeah, they're uh, they're de- donating hundred thousand dollars right off the bat to FNA and Godot, and they are also going to be giving them a thousand bucks a month in continued patronship because they want to continue to foster good cross-platform tools. And Terraria is an FNA joint. There was originally done an XNA, flip it, ported it over, and now it fucking runs on everything because FNA is great like that. And you should use SDL two in your project game developers it makes just makes me so to- fucking happy like when you get a game terraria like you know that person he's a good guy because he's like yeah i made a game it was great but now it's like fuck i print money i'm still a good guy though because it was just me let's do mm-hmm. good with it <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do avoid the political posting look at what happened to notch <laughs> doing good with it and just makes me really happy to see this uh both the projects extra financing and this is the type of momentum that whether or not you realize it you need it. This needs to fucking be there. When Unity comes back around again, everybody's like, ah. we never said, hopefully, both of these projects will be in a much better place. Mm-hmm. Hope it'll just be that much easier for you to probably try to switch over to Unreal because you just don't get it. <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, that seems to be uh, where people... Uh... Let's bring back Godot. Renderware. Godot was nice. Bring back Godot was really good. Just use Godot. I, I saw a video that popped up in my YouTube feed. Um, if you're not of a certain age, Renderware was like it. Like Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, all yeah, these yeah. games. Yeah, like everything was made with a Renderware. At it. Like it was it. It dominated the games market. Fucking gone overnight. <laughs> so keep that in mind, Unity. Keep mm-hmm. that in mind. So why are we talking about this? This is Microsoft Activision's UK News. Microsoft's trying to scoop up uh, Activision Blizzard. Uh, because you know, no one actually cares about Call of Duty, um, it's, and and Overwatch and StarCraft. They're garbage franchises that no one really cares about. So Microsoft should just be able to buy them out, right? So um, the UK is pro- is very likely going to allow the deal to go through, but they are allowing uh, they're allowing other companies to create some stipulations. And this one is kind of interesting. This comes from Ubisoft, and it comes from Stephen Tolito. Uh, Totillo, I don't know how to pronounce Totillo. it. He's a Totillo. He's a reporter. Totino's, Stephen yes. Totino's pizza rolls, the tastiest man. He's so he's so delicious. I just love his crispy flesh. Um, but uh, Ubisoft is saying 
uh, that Microsoft may be required to make sure that their games that they publish will run properly on Proton and other emulators. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, that famous whole acronym about why not being an emulator, shut up. Yeah, no, okay. seriously. Shut up. The sweet, delicious irony of that ruling uh, invalidates the whole emulator question. It's now, just, now, so hell yes. <laughs> does this mean, though, that the UK is basically win, uh, mandating Win32 as a standard game EXE format, at least for Ubisoft games? Because this is mostly just for Ubisoft. This is um, Ub- Ubisoft saying, like, hey, we if uh, if we look at creating like a streaming game platform, you're going to need to put in the work to make this run on a Windows or non Windows system, which is a good thing, I guess. But like, ha- but like Microsoft is on the hook for doing that work. If theoretically, if this goes through, what what is the quality of that work going to be realistically? Like, oh, yeah, I mean, we got, they we say run that and- they must carry out the work at a regular pace and a quality and standard, which is customary with the games industry. So it would be not very high. shit for several yeah. months. I mean, it yeah. sounds like a perfect project for or a stipulation <laughs> to Microsoft to, to agree to and never execute on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So, um, Nuvo. Yes, as it turns out, uh, the people, I don't know, is this a, a new thing? Over at Red Hat, they just give up on uh, doing things. Well, uh, this one comes, uh, well, it, it comes from uh, the uh, maintainer, uh, Ben, who was uh, the lead person or the last person <laughs> still working actively on Nuvo. And it, he's, uh, okay, no, I, I'm out. I've been uh, pondering this for a while now, and I, I'm just stepping out uh stepping away from my position at red hat and uh i'll still keep an rtx 4070 to test but it's yeah this poke in his nose every so often at most and uh, he does bring up that the fact that nvk is in a very good place right now which yes and it, it seems to be uh nvk and zinc which is um gl over vulcan it, that that will be the compatibility way going forward for uh, people wanting to stay away from the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. It would be great if NVK properly supported everything that supports Vulkan on NVIDIA side. So everything Kepler and up, that would be great. It would be nice if it supported for me too, but that's just wishful thinking on my part. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it looks like his bowing out was basically just like, you know, he's he's been working at Red Hat, spearheading the Nuvo driver development for basically forever. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you know, if I were in charge of making an open source NVIDIA driver for, car, for like, actual cards, I probably would have quit, like, five, ten years ago. So, like, Ben, ben Skeggs, you know, more, more power <laughs> to you. you. You made it this long, though, like Pedro alluded to, though. He still he still got a 4070. He still wants to not use the proprietary drivers. So he's going to be around. He'll still be probably answering questions and poking his head in, but no longer going to be the main person in the seat. Hopefully the Collabora guys and the folks who are working on NVK can make some good progress. And yeah, where where are we on the open source like actual like the open source Nvidia Nvidia driver well, getting backported to Maxwell cuz like that the was the cuz it, it was just uh, for me it up, right? Uh, it was uh, basically NVK is just for Vulcan, and Vulcan was only supported in Kepler and up. Uh, it already supported Pascal because Collabora released a patch a while back to bring it back basically to Pascal. But yeah, it, it, Maxwell and Kepler are still in the air. Mm. I think, like, one of the things if, with this, if there are enough old um, cards floating around. Are you guys just getting like a crazy delay from me or not hear me? I don't know how bad is the delay. We can hear you. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. I, I was saying like one of the big things with his patch that he pushed out before he pieced out was getting that firmware in there. So for the mm-hmm. 20, 30, and 40 mm-hmm. series cards, we now have reclocking. Hey. So they're not going to be running 24-7. Like flat out. And I think that's really dope. So like you said, like NVK, I, that's probably going to be the future. I don't see anybody picking this up though. I I mean, yeah, it's 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 a lot of hard work for very very little reward cuz basically that even with like the current Nuvo development, 
we got it to the point where you can open up a browser and go to the NVIDIA website and download the actual NVIDIA drivers to install them. Mm. Um, it, 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 it's the ones it, from the repo. <laughs> it, it's the Internet Explorer bootstrap. That's what I, Internet Explorer <laughs> exists for, is to go download the actual browser you want to use. And then, yeah. All right. Pedro, tell me about the Stadia leaks and uh, how it's all Linux fault that it failed. Nobody else's uh, Google was flawless and blameless. Oh, yeah. it, it is 100% uh, the fault of Linux, at least if you believe extreme tech. Uh, yes, uh, the, <laughs> that's where this particular article comes from. And it's about a leaked document that reveals how Google screwed up Stadia. And the general argument is that... Um, Going with Linux effectively doomed Stadia right from the get-go. It wasn't for the fact that uh, AAA publishers are old dogs set on their ways. No, no, no. It's uh, it's the fault of Google and having picked Linux. Uh, the company considered going with Windows and DirectX, which would have made it a snap for developer support uh, games. Uh, That's uh, an actual canonical quotable. snap. <laughs> That would have probably created even more hostility, but no, that's an actual quote from uh, the editorialization uh, on display, and it says that, yeah, that because every other uh, streaming service that currently runs based on Windows, it supports all games. No, all not, games work, right? Not, not, not even that. Like again, we've we've been talking very, very much about how. Microsoft is very aggressively pursuing a cloud gaming strategy. <laughs> Google getting in bed with Microsoft to create a rival product to their offering would probably not be a good business relationship to enter into if I were if I were Google. I, if I if I were a principal engineer there, I would have looked at the options and say, yeah, we probably got to get this running under Linux because we don't want to have to deal with the Microsoft licensing. We don't want to want to have to deal with Microsoft actively sabotaging us by mm -hmm. making technology choices that we can't adapt to. Um, and yeah, like, like let's let's be real. The real fucking Stadia killer was the entire model where you don't actually own the games. It was the ownership model where you can only play your shit on Stadia. You had to buy it at full price no, no, specifically no, Jordan, for Jordan, stadia you could get the stadia games at such a steep discount oh yeah yeah the very 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 steep discount yeah the but, first party stadia games <laughs> but but uh, again i was bringing up uh when we were talking about uh the the microsoft thing uh microsoft has a netflix ser service for games they have game pass mm -hmm. stadia, stadia did not perhaps stadia may have succeeded if they adopted a similar model but Microsoft, but that was like a pretty bold move from Microsoft. And I think Microsoft was really only in a position to do that because they are a loss leader, because they have that billions of dollars of capital that they can just burn. That's how like Xbox has frankly been alive, uh, despite the fact that it hasn't really been competing all that well with like PlayStation. Um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, what, I what did they expect from like a little startup like Google? They didn't have the resources to uh, push that through like what, that. One thing. Uh, Gone. No, we're good. I, I was, I was going to say, like, one thing I would be really interested in hearing from is from someone like Flibit who did actually port some shit over to Stadia and, mm -hmm. like, understand what were the the actual difficulties. Because it's not just like, oh, you just produced the Stadia build. You need to do, like, latency compensation and all this other crap that you only really need to think about when you're not, when you're, when you're streaming a game, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, basically having to account for the inputs coming via the network, not locally, and having to account for the latency of those inputs and how you're presenting frames on screen. And if there is a cock up on the network somewhere, how are you going to roll that back? Are you just going to go with it? Where is that going to go? Yeah, it's uh, if you're releasing a fully stream, like streaming based platform, you don't want to be relying on Microsoft. On top of the massive amount of technical debt that Windows incurs by itself, uh, yet, like Jordan was saying, that they have their own competitor. So unless you have NVIDIA-level money to justify a subpar service like that and putting yourself in the hands of Microsoft to run your platform, mm -hmm. Linux was the least of Stadia's problems. It was, it was kind. Of, it was kind of their only option, realistically, if they wanted yeah. to like fully productize and white label it. Could you imagine Google like having to justify to their finance wonks? Oh yeah, and Microsoft gets like ten percent of every single time they load this game in our browser. 
Mm -hmm. You think the Unity installation fee is bad? <laughs> That's a big oh, Unity yeah. blush, man. I'm thinking about that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it wasn't Linux. Like, Google didn't need Linux's help to kill Stadia. I really think that's where we're at at the end of the day. Yeah, and like yeah, absolutely, but like to, from to 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 give some grace to this article, yeah, they bit off more than they could chew. They didn't have enough experience actually porting games to Linux to actually like create a, a, a organization in their business to do that on behalf of other companies, which they would have had to do to get said games on Stadia because they're not because like CD Projekt Red, they're having enough problems getting Cyberpunk running on a PlayStation. They're not going to try and devote resources to get it no. running on Stadia, right? Oh, man. So maybe you didn't ever stream anything from Stadia. I No, I, I made a recording of uh, before it was Stadia when I was demoing it way back when. But you probably have used OBS. You probably streamed a game, recorded a game, or just did something with it. And while we're old, living in this X11 life, Joshy wants to bring some of that new hotness. <laughs> over to OBS in the form of GameScope Capture. This is pretty cool. Um, it's going to add a GameScope Capture backend to OBS, and it's going to provide support for really everything GameScope does, which is really cool, because then you're going to have Steam Deck support for OBS. You know, they get this in the flat pack with OBS. You're good to go. And, um, well, you know what, Pedro? It looks like Joshi did get a little bit of his taste of uh, some of that OBS bureaucracy that kind of Oh, yeah. Showed up. At least it didn't get told, don't even bother submitting the pull request. <laughs> no, he just went and submitted the pull request. It's like, here's what it does. Here's what I wanted to do it for, which is great. It, it, it is absolutely great for our game scope as a desktop compositor future. I am looking forward to it. If you want to use HDR on Linux, you need game scope anyway. So, yeah. or even just game, and, games that don't support windowed mode, right? Like so many of those, just being able to launch it like in a little older window. SDL 1.2 games that actively yeah. fuck with uh, multi monitor configurations, or, 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 or modern games that like, oh yeah, or, we have borderless <laughs> full screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just uh, pick a monitor at random. It's like, oh yeah, that mo uh, monitor you have in portrait mode. I'm gonna go there. Really, but yeah, the. Um, this will allow effectively OBS to capture specific regions or windows within a game scope context rather than just the parent game scope window slash screen because that's all it could do up to this point. So with this in place, you could just use game scope as a desktop compositor and have the same functionality that you already get on Wayland or X, whatever. It's good. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the 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 the. OBS bureaucracy here, Joshi is fighting with is whether or not they want to a, a whether or not he needs to downgrade a version of a library that isn't available in Large Linux because the Windows developer is like, well, I don't know, I'm just gonna make problems, and then <laughs> then, uh, then actually like doing the uh, the portal or um, or pipe wire hole punching to actually get access to the contents of the game scope session. And there's a there's actually a pretty robust technical discussion about uh, whether or not they need to do this. I think the conclusion is they probably need to do it anyways joshi has a way around it and the obs people are like well i mean part eh, of that, but the, we, like, don't, we don't we don't like how it's the way it came up man uh because joshi kind of hit back when they're like we don't really want to punch holes and he's like the flat pack already hole punches uh to make your microphone and desktop sound work guys so they're like well that's somehow different <laughs> it's the exact same thing but we did we don't like it <laughs> yeah do do as i say not as i do <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it looks like they're going to be doing some work with XGD uh, desktop portal, uh, figure out a way around it, maybe set up uh, some type of magic moon dust programming stuff to communicate with the pipe wire and make it work. But Josh, is like, I got, I got something that works right now, guys. Don't you like want to put that in? <laughs> Yeah, something that works the exact same way that they've gotten everything else to work. Yeah, so. and, 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 and and he's like, oh, and when you fix that other thing, that fix will get ingested into my thing. So it's not even a problem. We don't even need to go back for the fix. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. All right. So last poor, thing. Poor, poor Joshi. Right. Hey, I mean, it's a... <laughs> you, you just, you just got to work with the system on that one. That's all I'll say. Uh, so Universal Len, GOG, GOG Galaxy, something that we don't necessarily have on Linux because GOG, you know, small upstart, you know, they can't 
afford the development time to make sure you have a, a Linux compatible client, but man, they'd love to take your money. But I do want to talk about because GOG's got its own version of um, networking. Steam sockets. Yeah. Like it's, it's like you can do the multiplayer things. You can target GOG Galaxy. It's like, huh, I didn't even know they bothered to do that, which they did. So I want to give them a little bit of credit. So somebody's come up with an application called Universal LAN, which is a GOG Galaxy wrapper that will let you do the LAN direct IP connections for games in Galaxy multiplayer. Which is like, well, that's cool. That won't be of use. And I'm just scrolling through the GitHub repo and I'm like, oh, it's got Linux build instructions. Okay. Maybe you get my attention just a little bit. I'm not sure why it compiles, Pedro, but maybe there's a good reason. Yeah, the, the, uh, you brought up in the notes is maybe we'll see some uh, open source um, GOG replacement clients uh, make use of it. I, I'm sure we will very, very soon. Uh, even if it isn't Lutris, because I know Strider's watching or listening, as the case may be. Um, uh, the fine folks behind the legendary client could absolutely make use of this and it, it's probably a good idea that they should because this makes yeah this effectively removes that drm requirement of having to have galaxy installed if you want to play those particular gawk games in multiplayer which yes they exist <laughs> yeah and this this project already has a pretty limited scope because there are a lot of gog games that have online multiplayer that just support like direct ip connection which is like the, the, this is for games that like don't have that they need to use like some sort of multiplayer client and yeah you need you need to compile it because this is a bunch of dlls that you replace all the galaxy dlls with uh with a bunch of configuration files in the game folder you're probably going to need something like Lutris or Heroic to manage this anyways, because it seems like a pain in the ass oh, yeah. to manually set up. Way. 100%. Yeah. I was surprised yeah. by how many and, games uh, they currently have that are working, like Origami, uh, Forsaken Remastered, Guns, Gordon, whatever, Cannoli, yeah. Tropico 6, Battle Slug 3, yeah. and we're out of games. The, the, the real one I was I was kind of interested in was Shadow Warrior 2, because when uh, Empty and I did our playthrough of that on Thursdays, oh, so many years ago, that was... God damn it. We've been doing the show for a long time. <laughs> Fuck. Um, yeah, like we, we, we both got the like I, I got the GOG version for free and I couldn't play it with the Steam version. So I had to go buy the Steam version. Nah. And I really I, I wonder I wonder if we could use this to like be able to better enable crossplay across like Steam versus GOG versions, because that's kind of like a pisser. It's like, oh, I got this game on Steam. Really like to play it with you. Yeah, I have it on. I have it on GOG. Too bad. Mm. I'll give I'll give Epic credit where credit is due. Epic Online Servers is, is pr the cross platform multiplayer is pretty well polished, I gotta say. That's got nothing like, on Bethesda. I think though, man. In that, with your Bethesda's is like <laughs> yeah. the pinnacle. Yeah, and, and, it, and it fucking works. <laughs> it fucking works great, which is like, good on you, Epic. Bethesda's better. Bethesda. Oh, wait, you gotta, you gotta log into Bethesda Net from the browser <laughs> before you can log in via the game so that I can, I can play Wolfenstein Wiggle Young it, Blood. Jiggle it, pray. You know, by, by the end of the series, we kind of had our system worked out where we had like a, at least an 80% chance of getting in game yeah. together. What, like, we, we, we did a bunch of shit, and I'm pretty sure, like, not all of it was required, mm -hmm. but throughout all of it, we got through the required it, it was steps. A, listen, we had a ritual, all right? And that, it, it, that's how we made it. It was a bit work. of a shotgun approach. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we had to do the proper incantations. It doesn't matter. It, it was about the principle of it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's almost going to wrap us up for the show that <laughs> has not been broken. What are you talking about? Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing. Te technical difficulties. What? <laughs> Smooth sailing. Uh, but before we get out of here, uh, we do like it when you reach out. Give us some talky talks. Have we said anything during this show that you're like, hey, man, I got a opinion on that. You know what you can do? You can leave a YouTube comment. That's fine. Might get back to you on that. You can leave a comment on Odyssey. 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 Go ahead. I dare you. If you're one of our beautiful party patrons, just leave it on the Patreon post. And Absolutely. You know what? Just be careful because that's probably going to get included on the show. But everybody's got a fair chance, especially if you head over to LinuxTeamCast.com where we have a contact form where we all can read a copy and sit and silently judge you and reply to it, maybe even next week. So if you got something, if we were wrong, if we were right, maybe you got some unity thoughts. If somebody does this week, Jordan. Yeah, this is from .NET 23456789 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 
Yeah, and uh, in, in response to this Unity stuff, uh, they say, Unity has just shown that they are willing to change the terms on what you have to pay them. What happens when Unity is out of money and squeezes developers again? Doing business with Unity is too risky now. It's the wrong two. I struggled to think of a more well-defined burn the ships moment in my lifetime. Yeah, no, it was not. Uh, it was uh, I, you. You get really have to admire the gall of of the the finance people. They really they really thought they had a good idea. They thought that like this would work. I don't know if it was the finance people. I I, I think this was the investment people the, the the board yeah <laughs> they're the ones going we should make more money we should try and make the engine profitable <laughs> how do you go about making unity uh, okay pedro you're the new c-e-f-e-o i p two more f's for no reason just i'm, I'm feeling generous um okay what, what is your 12 month plan <laughs> to uh, bring unity to profitability, uh, how do we how do we make some cheddar? Board's gonna fuck off you. They're like, you got twelve months. <laughs> uh, I think the as much as you know, I <laughs> I have my quarrels with Epic, but their approach to okay, the moment you make half a million dollars, you owe us five percent on every sale or ten percent on every sale, whatever the case may be, and then. If you cross a certain threshold, you do what Valve is also doing, which is you lower that. Okay, you've made more than, you've sold more than 5 million copies of all your games up to this point, so now instead of 10%, it's only 7.5. That would keep a constant stream of money com coming back, and maybe increase the cut that you make off of the asset store now here's what i'm thinking because uh i forget maybe it was jordan or you know what this was targeted at being the mobile developers because like in mm -hmm. that, that that's the only thing i can think about like it, where did that make sense because you gotta imagine if you're a mobile developer even if your game blows up what do you do you close that business start another one Right, and and like m most of these mobile app, mobile game people, they release a bunch of games. Right, it's cast a wide net of like low effort clocks and screensavers and Bitcoin miners and whatever. Right, and yeah, you 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 collect like maybe ten thousand dollars lifetime from like each of them, and, and then you then you shut it down. That's that's what I'm thinking. That that is the only angle. This is why your feedback is going to be important on this. I want to hear some other uh, hot takes and conspiracy theories on this. Because the only angle I could think where this makes sense is, you know, the Unity board going, how do we squeeze those motherfuckers? Well, th what they want to do is push people to that to the ad share revenue thing. The, the, their yeah. their whole thing was yeah. like, oh yeah, you you get you get the installation fee waived if you if you partner with us on this thing. So I gotta think that is probably the like the more long term profit thing that they want to push people towards. Mm. Just like pu push the push the monetization yeah, stuff. Why you have people go to a third party ad uh, platform when they have their own in house that they bought the malware uh, adware? I mean, um, be, be, and and be, 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 beyond beyond that. If I am dinging you for 20 cents in insole, isn't doesn't that incentivize you as a developer to create some additional monetization to buffer that sting from you? So like And yeah. as John Rigitello that was quoted as saying that developers that don't actively capitalize as much as they can on their video games are fucking idiots. Yeah, his so it's, words. It's, Listen, it's, man, it's if just, I could find a way more, to charge you every time you reload it, direction. I would. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it 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 it, it, is, it is really much. It's really so much of it is like how how do we pass the cost on to the next guy so that the next guy can go? How can we pass the cost on to the customer so that fuck you? That's why. Like, yeah. Do you think we're not too far off from seeing it, seeing like just straight up ads and games, like from Unity titles? They're like, you know what? Here, you, you got to put this in if you're going to be using the uh, home version. Oh yeah, you, 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 you got to do the American Truck Simulator thing of like, yeah, we're we're just gonna recruit actual truckers. Oh no 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 no! no. This is just gonna be no fucks the given. Here's are an going ad. to have actual ads. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punch the monkey. <laughs> bon Bonsai Buddy Three, <sighs> NF Cheese Edition. I don't know, man. Uh, what do we do? What was that? Oh uh, yeah. I don't know. And yeah, what? maybe Unity could make a fucking some something worth that people wanted to buy. 
No, that, that, that's that's not how you make a successful business. You don't like make a good product. You mm -hmm. edge you edge all the competition out so that everyone is stuck dealing with your bullshit. Well, I mean, the, but there then we end no up in this situation. Yeah, or are you just giving them, what are you going to just give away a game engine then turn around and try to charge people for install? Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we monetize the people that we currently can't? Oh, well, I so, know. We'll uh, change the terms of service, make them uh, apply retroactively, and then charge 20 fucking cents. What, what, what if we could find a way instead to charge people for not playing? <laughs> no, no, no. You charge for uninstalls. <laughs> that that's it. it oh, no, double it, charge it. Charge it, 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 once it, it, for it, install, install and again for uninstall. No, and then and then you got to charge rent on the hard drive, right? Because that's that space is 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 at a premium, right? So you gotta <laughs> listen. It's ten percent uh, off uninstalls uh, under a yeah, hundred thousand dollars. Mean, meanwhile, there is some fucking MBA who is just screaming his jeans listening to this shit. He's like, oh my god. Yeah, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I think that's what we all secretly want. Because, I mean, this is so, again, like, a uh, movie villain, dumb, evil, that it's like, I want to be in that meeting. I, I hope there's a recording of it. Where they're like, yeah, that's brilliant. I, I hope they all erupt in like actual maniacal laughter after they do it. They're just like, <laughs> they're just like full on cartoon characters. You just expect like Mike Myers to like turn around in his chair and full fucking Dr. Evil makeup. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. My, Mike Myers is like, no, you guys are too evil for me. I quit. <laughs> then, then they throw him out the window like a fucking comic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get out of here. Thanks for sticking around with us. Uh, if you like what we do and you'd love to support this super high quality production that we have going on right now, because we, we got some like, oh, geez, uh, like 2006, 2007 vibes going on right now. If you're unfamiliar, you weren't catching. We did the live stream. We did a radio version of the show. Thanks to every one of you who showed up in our discord, listening to us live. Then that kind of fell apart so now pedro and jordan are on the discord audio as well and we're just fucking powering through this we're just like we're gonna put this so, so we're, we're 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 gonna resort to like messenger pigeons eventually <laughs> oh man uh yeah we definitely got some old school vibes coming in through this but hey if you want to help this train wreck out and this one's been a train wreck head over to linuxteamcast.com if you can uh, share the show, tell people about it, that's awesome. Again, if you're one of those awesome people supporting us over at Patreon, we got a bunch of free stuff we kick your way as a big thank you. A big sloppy, wet rub of our pinky toes on your earlobes. It's going to be just like that. we got Libra Pay. we got Amazon Wishlist. If you want to pick up something for these yahoos for soldiering on and putting up with this bullshit tonight, you can. Because they have fantastic things in their wish zones and you can get a note and make them read things like custom voicemails nobody's ever done that yet i'm still waiting for that one to come through um, we, we got we got the one we got the one voicemail we got the one voicemail but <laughs> that apparently it wasn't as easy to get to the first time well now, after you get through the, the bullshit the first time apparently it's easier <laughs> see i would be putting together like if somebody offered such an amazing service of where i could type in like pick up something from their wish list and write out sentences i would abuse the shit out of that i would have you saying all type of shit like, why do you just need me to read these words out? No reason. No yeah, reason. yeah, just, just like just just spread it out it. over the course of like several several weeks, and then get like the collage. <laughs> so you could just be like, uh, just, you could you could just do the chef thing. I want to make <laughs> love. Yeah, right. Oh man. Uh, hey, thanks for your support. Keep being awesome. Keep being brilliant. And uh, we're gonna bounce out of here. Uh, maybe I can cue the music and it won't blow up. Who knows? We'll find out. Fire! Yeah, we got some noise. Fire hey, at the Taco Bell. <laughs> Fire everywhere. Brought to you by Charter <laughs> Business. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you know where. Yeah, I'm on. I'm still on the Zitter thing. I post there occasionally. We got the Mastodons. I'm on mast.linuxgamecast.com. In fact, you can find my Mastodon on my Zitter or on the web zone. Doing all that stuff there. Just uh, pop in our IRC or pop in our Discord. You can have, reply me there. If you have any questions, thoughts, hints, or allegations, old man Ven will be happy to go. Hello. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? All right. Before this call completely collapses, I'm Jordan. Find me on Twitter, <laughs> X, whatever, at the Burning Fool or Mastodon. I'm Frojo at mass.lixgamecast.com. Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto, Pedro. Who are you? I am only on Mastodon. It's unaccounted for with the actual number four at the end at mastodonlinuxgamecast.com. Shout at me. I'll toot right back at you. <laughs> Robo toot. Oh. Robo toot. credits. <laughs>
We, we gotta read the credits. It says but introducing they're, 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 Microsoft they're, Windex. <laughs> Brought to you by Microsoft Bob, Microsoft Sam, Microsoft. <laughs> oh, thanks to all of our beautiful party patrons, our advisors, Omegas, our Theor, and all of our executive producers, Barbara and Scott, Atomic Ass, Mike, Drummer, Tomas, Hakeem, David, Eshep, Ian, Chicago's Kicks, and Ass with the Super Death Stowed, Empty, Glorious Agro, Blasphema, Nub, and all of our sea monsters, Renault, Rider, X, Machina, Truggy, Verifanuda, Verifanuda, Justin, Darkwing, <laughs> System P, Ogi One, yeah, I, they're getting so small, I'm old. Get off my lawn, kids. <laughs> All of our beautiful party churlings like uh, K.R. Ducky, Mark, Aceback, Init, Six, and Tim. And of course, our fine, upstanding cannibals, Carl Mike, our Theoretics, New Old DS, Noculus, Johnny, Shep, Gamatron, you know, DS, and Joe, Aromatic Dev, and Kai Jorai. You're all truly wonderful. We made Way it, bitches. Too sexy for us. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> It wasn't pretty. I thought it was going to explode at the very end, but we made it. Uh, it, it, it got real crunchy there. <laughs> do what you must. We've already won. <laughs> Die to fire, everyone. See you next week. Doodles. Hopefully. Allegedly. <laughs> Maybe. Five dudes. <laughs>